Hi, I'm Bonnie Kane with WISD-TV. About five and a half years ago, I came to WISD as the superintendent. On my very first day, I was asked to go to Kendrick Elementary because a local media personality wanted to interview me. And it was a really great interview and I appreciated that um, media personalities tact and interest in the district and just a commitment to doing a good job. So recently, we hired that man and now the tables are turned and I get to interview him. And it is with my pleasure, great pleasure, that I interview Mr. Bruce Geetson, who is now the Waco ISD Director of Communications and Marketing. Yes. Welcome. So how does it feel to be on the other side of the uh, aisle here? It feels great. And by the way, you did a great job in, in your first interview. We had to break in That's right. at the interview, you know, but I, I could tell you had a commitment to the kids right away. So, And it was fun. And then the, the good thing, Dr. Kane, as well afterwards, said, okay, well, how'd I do? She wanted to get better. She said, give me a CD, a, a DVD of the interview so I could look and see. So, And that showed me something, mm -hmm. that you did that. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, you wanted to project the right image. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just saying, I want to look good on mm -hmm. camera, but she wanted to project the right image for the district, and you did that. And you've done that for five and a half years. So, well, But who would have known that it would turn into what it is, right? Yeah. Well, and you know, we had a great communications department, and unfortunately, Mr. Caffey wanted to retire. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no secret that I pursued you. <laughs> I knew that we wanted to go to the next level and you were the man to do that. Well, thank you. So what, are, what, what, are, what is the next level for well, WISD communication? Well, first of all, Dale was some pretty big shoes to fill. Yes, he he was. was here for 28 yes, years yes. and did a fantastic job yes. and everybody in town knew him. So, uh, so thank you, Dale, for setting the <laughs> table for that. And so, but um, when I came in and we had a numerous conversations before I got in that we wanted to take the department uh, in, uh, to the next level, a little bit of a side road, a different direction, still doing a lot of the good things that Dale had set up in the department doing and I got a great staff in there but we also wanted to work on some marketing and some public relations mm -hmm. for the school district mm -hmm. and and uh, and help the public see all the great things that are going on in the school district and that was one of the driving forces to my decision because in the media I saw a lot of the good things that were going on I saw the dedication of the people I saw some of the great students we had and some of those stories weren't getting out there and I thought well, if I can nudge the media along and help tell some of those stories, now the effort is uh, to, uh, to get people in the habit, to get sponsors in the habit and schools in the habit, parents in the habit, and saying, hey, this would be a good story, and call and letting us know. It's really hard for us to let people know if we don't know about That's it. True. So getting that process in place where people are going to think, uh, hey, let's, let's get the word out about this particular thing. And I see that almost every day when people say, hey, we did a thing the other day at one of the campuses, and I go, Tell us about that so we can tell other people. So. Well, I agree. A lot of great things are happening in WISD. We're just not getting them out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really appreciate that aspect of it. But after that first interview, it wasn't that long that I had a meeting at the Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. And guess who I was sitting next to? <laughs> and I was so pleased that, you know, you and Ann were both there mm -hmm. and promoting WISD, the foundation, and that you were the key to the Celebrity Chef Cook-Off. Mm -hmm. So are you going to stay in that role? Are you able to do that? Well, when you and, and Dr. McDermott were talking to me <laughs> about the job, I didn't want to let you know right off what I thought about it, but I remember we asked him during one part of the interview, I said, well, what about the Celebrity Cook-Off? <laughs> And you, both of you kind of looked at me like, was he asking us if he has to do it or are they telling us he wants to do it? And I said, I'd like to stay involved. And you guys took a deep breath yeah. and said, that we is, knew it was your baby. Well, it, that's exactly right. <laughs> it has been uh, my baby and, and Bill Davenport's baby from HEB. And, and, and going back just a little bit from that, when you were talking about the Education Foundation, Ann Harder, my co-anchor at KX6V, mm -hmm. is, a, is a dear, dear friend. We sat side by side like you and I are doing for 13 years. And she always says, Bruce, it's my fault you got involved in it because she got me involved in the Education <laughs> Foundation to get started on that. But it wasn't a fault, it's a credit to her to do that. And I was happy to serve because I'm passionate about education. But we had, 10 years ago, uh, the Education Foundation had a fundraiser that was a golf tournament. And we thought, well, we need something else. Tracy Marlin was the, was the, the public information officer. And we brainstormed some and said, what other type of fundraiser that can we come up with? Because a lot of people do golf tournaments. A lot of people do. We wanted something different. And she had heard about some type of cook-off competition uh, for 
I don't remember if it was teachers or whatever, in somewhere in Carolina or somewhere on the East Coast. And so we, we fed off that a little bit and said, what if we got local celebrities, you know, the mayor and the sheriff, the district attorney and things like that. And says, let's try to do that and hit on it. And I remember that first year, uh, 11, now, almost 11 years ago now, we had, I think, 14 chefs. Uh, and, and people warmed up to it as a new idea. They were ready to try it. And we raised $14,000, which was the exact same amount that we raised with the golf tournament. <laughs> and Kay Metz, who was the executive director of the Education Foundation, thought, well, you know, everybody was, we knew we were onto something because after the cook-off, the next day, people were calling and said, I know what I'm going to cook next year. <laughs> because the premise is celebrities bring one of their favorite recipes and cook some of that and sample it and then judges vote on it. And so we thought, well, if they're already thinking about that, we're on to mm -hmm. something. So we scrapped the golf tournament. It was a lot of work and it was a good event, but it made the same amount as the cook-off. Mm -hmm. let's focus our attention on the cook-off. So it has grown every year since then to the point where last year uh, we had 32 chefs. We sell out. We've sold out eight of the last nine years. It's a fantastic event not only for raising the money, and we raised $125,000, but it's also great for awareness for the Education Foundation and what we do. And best of all, it helps fund $100,000 in classroom grants to our teachers and students for, for innovative, out-of-the-box thinking, not just something that would be covered in the regular school district budget, but things like uh, really cool field trips mm -hmm. are, are really cool, uh, need equipment, you know, for technology to help our students mm -hmm. help prepare them for, for mm -hmm. a career after school, even at the elementary age. And so we have a committee with the Education Foundation, works very hard. Teachers submit grants and we have a grants committee. They look, they, we have at least five people read each grant and they go through all those grants and grade them. And then we award grants up to $7,500 every spring. And, you know, in TV news, one of the things we try to bring out is emotion. It's when that's the key news value to get from people. Well, there's not any more emotion that you can experience when you go into a classroom and you walk in with balloons and whistles with the prize <laughs> patrol and you're bringing a big check mm -hmm. for a teacher mm -hmm. for $5,000 or whatever that they worked hard on the grant in and they're passionate and care about their kids and they're going to be able to use that money to achieve their goals in the classroom. And boy, every year teachers get tears in their eyes and the kids are so excited. It makes all the work worthwhile. That's one of our favorite days. Yes, you get is, to be absolutely. on the team that goes out and, with the prize patrol. Yeah. Uh, so the celebrity chef, the r rumor is you've already sold the first table for next year's. Is that true? I did. I sold the first table last uh, yesterday. I had lunch with, uh, with Dan Ingham from First National Bank of Central Texas. And he said, uh, put us down for a table. And he's also going to be a chef in the next one. So we started the process. We're seven months out now meeting today with Andrea Zimmerman to brainstorm on some things. We've got a couple of big changes in store for the cook-off this year. And the, the old saying is, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. But still, we want to keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep some of the good things, but we're going to do a couple of exciting things this year and, and uh, keep people engaged because the community has really warmed up to the event. We couldn't do it without the support of some fantastic sponsors, especially HEB is the title oh, sponsor -E and Coke, and there's a number. But so generous. HEB, yeah, they step mm -hmm. up to the plate mm -hmm. big time uh, on this with the Coke off. And they love the event because it fits their culture and their brand. And Bill Davenport's been fantastic to work with, and Ed Page, and Jeff Thomas in Austin, and Leslie. And so you couldn't ask mm -hmm. for more cooperation. But it is a really fun event. If you haven't been, and tickets are hard to get, so, but as we get closer to that, you'll see some spots and some advertising. Talk to somebody who's bought a table and try to get a couple of their tickets because you'll have a fantastic time at that event. And it comes up in February. This year it's the 24th uh, at the convention center. So I mean, I'm telling you, ask anybody who's been, they'll go, wow, that is really a fun night. And, and, and the chefs get into it and really becomes a competition. So see, I get excited just talking about it and we're seven months out. But I wanted to, to, to still be involved and be a co-chair of that with Debbie Luce and work. So when you guys ask me, what about the, I said, what about the cook-off? I wanted to do that. I have another project that I wanted to be involved in. What was that? And, and, and I'm, I'm rambling here talking, but it's because I'm excited about it. And uh, you remember one of the things I told you about, there's another thing I want to wrap my arms around and I want you to let me kind of captain okay. because I think people are excited about it in the same way. And, and a lot of people didn't know Waco High School has a planetarium and it hasn't uh, been operative, I'm not sure the exact time frame, for, but for about 15 years. Now it's a large classroom and it's got the round dome ceiling, and, uh, but it's got the old analog 
uh, equipment, you know, the, 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 the spike with the nine spheres for the, for the plants. I remember that from when I was in school. It hasn't worked for a long time. And so it's been used as a storage room and such. And so, but every single person I talked to in town, and I've, I've started trying to spread the word a little bit, says, did you know Waco High has a planetarium? And the people from Waco High go, oh, yeah. I forgot about that, you know, and it says, what's going on with that? You know, and I said, well, we're going to try to revive it. You see them get excited about that. And I think that's the key to get people. It's going to take some fundraising to do, but the technology is so advanced in 15 years. And now people use digital technology, 6 million megapixel projectors to show. It. And so it can be astronomy, it can be astrology, but it can also be more than that because, um, it can do programs, modular digital programs, where you can plug in the drive and it'll do a 45 minute class on, say, uh, migration patterns of civilization for a geography class. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a lot of cool applications to it. We're going to run up to the Dallas area and look at a couple of places that have, uh, have planetariums. There are not very many school districts that own planetariums in Texas. So it would be a real feather in our cap for so Waco High. Would this would just be for Waco High's use? No, absolutely not. It would be, and it wouldn't just be for Waco ISD's use too. It's like the academies, Guama and Guaco. <laughs> we want to spread the educational mm -hmm. possibilities mm -hmm. throughout the county. So other schools in our district and also other schools outside the district mm -hmm. in the county or nearby could bring field trips mm -hmm. to the, to the uh, planetarium and uh, it would hold 35 to 45 people at a time, and then the room next to it might be a quote-unquote holding room or a science exhibit mm -hmm. where kids could learn there, and while the other class is taking their class, and then they would move out and change places. So we could run a, a good number of people through there. But I'd also like to open it up to the public a few days a month mm -hmm. because there are a lot of mm -hmm. astrology and astronomy buffs, mm -hmm. and, and again, the technology is so incredible with that to do so now that being said I've got to figure out how much the cost is going to be I've got to try to find some sponsors and and get people involved so we're in the formulative stages of that but I, I again when I mention it to people I've already had five or six people on the on the foundation board and with the district saying I want to be on the committee to help with that and so that's a tip you know that people are going to say <laughs> hey we might be on to something again but I'm passionate about getting that going because it would be great for Waco High, it would be great for the district, it'd be great for the county, and then the public would also get a chance to experience it. But how about Baylor? Do they have a planetarium on campus? Baylor's got uh, something at, at Mayborn uh, Museum, but I don't know that if it's a full-scale planetarium to do with it. There are, there are 47 or 48 of them in the state, but I think there are only about a dozen tied to school districts. Well, I MCC, like we do. I mean, we would love to share Absolutely. with their classes. Absolutely. And, I suspect once you buy those modules, you could, we could get however, whatever level we could. And there are dozens of classes involved in that that you can, and, and they're creating new ones all the time. And the modules are not expensive, but you can get to the point where you have 30 or 40 or 50 classes that you, the uh, modules that you mm -hmm. could use that would be a, a teaching lesson for them. And you could have gifted and talented and science classes mm -hmm. there as mm -hmm. part of the curriculum. And it would almost be like our academies, the healthcare mm -hmm. academy, mm -hmm. manufacturing mm -hmm. academy, a science mm -hmm. academy. Boy, I'd love for SpaceX to say, hey, this is right uh, up our alley oh, to do yeah. that. And, and HEB so big on education. Mm -hmm. So I've got a little uh, list of people I'd like to approach about it, but it would be fantastic for the for Waco High School. Ed Love's excited about it. It'd be fantastic for the district and also the community. So sounds great. Okay. Well, let's get back to closer to your roles okay. as director. All right. Uh, I've noticed we've really stepped up our game in social media. We have. I think that's a, a key way. I mean, it's it's no secret. One of the initiatives the district has has gone after is getting neighborhood, community, and parent involvement. And I believe one of the ways to elevate that is through social media. Not just people reading, but I also want people contributing. So we're trying to set up teams on each campus, a social media team. And uh, it would include three to five staff members, but also would like them to have a couple of parents involved mm -hmm. on that. Some of your, every campus has, has a few, a handful of parents that want to get involved in a lot of things, you know, whether it's PTA or the volunteering, things like that, or, uh, you know, homeroom captains and things. So, uh, because again, it, it's hard for us to do stories about it if we don't know about it, but there's so much good news happening on every campus. That's a good way for us to get it out. It's cost effective. And if we can get people in the habit of, of posting and those teams posting, and the district would still maintain some control over that and oversee it. But 
then every campus would have some ownership in it. You know, when I was in TV, a lot of things that parents, everybody loved to see themselves on TV. Mm -hmm. Put my kid on TV, <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, it's almost like the internet is almost just as good mm -hmm. as being on mm -hmm. TV. And mm -hmm. it's cool if, you're, if your kid can be on the internet and then you can call grandma mm -hmm. in Franklin, Tennessee mm -hmm. and say, hey, little Johnny now is on, go check him out on the website. So, so it serves the same purpose and it's easier to access. So, but we think social media is a, is, a, is a great tool for us to help spread the word about the good story. So we're setting up those teams on campus um, and I've got somebody on staff in charge of that, one of my staff people, David, and, and so far he's done a great job getting people involved, posting more on Facebook. Uh, I want the department almost to run a little more like a newsroom the information mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we want to know everything that's going on and keep a master calendar and we'll meet a couple days a week and say okay what things are coming up that we want to that we want to cover. We want to get on social media. I want to do stories on. It's not a long drawn out meeting just for a few minutes, 15 minutes uh, a couple times a week. The other way that also helps me is not neglecting conventional media, TV mm -hmm. and radio and mm -hmm. newspaper. Because if I know about those stories because of my experience on the other side of the camera, I, I've got an idea what would make a good story that TV stations would be interested in, whatever. And so if something comes up, I think they'd be interested in that, then I can shoot them a little email or something says, here's a possible story opportunity or photo opportunity. On a slow day, mm -hmm. they're looking for things mm -hmm. to do and it's another chance to get good stories from Waco ISD out there. And done that a couple times so far and it's worked and so I hope to, to, to create that expectation and manage that with the stations that I can help you find some things to put on So the do air. the stations think you've gone over to the dark side? Some of them have. <laughs> some, uh, it, it's funny, the, the, the PR people and friends I have in the business called me after the, the move was announced and, and they said, oh, you're coming over, the, coming over to the light, you know, and the TV people, yeah, you're going over to the dark side, you know, and so it's funny. There's a, there's a <clears throat> I don't want to say polarizing, that's a negative word, but it was interesting to see the dynamics of that. And so I have come over to the PR side, uh, so to speak, but, and everybody's been fantastic about some of the tools it can use to, to be better with that. And, and then I still have that knowledge and the relationships and the friends in the TV business mm -hmm. and with all the stations, mm -hmm. not just with Channel 25. And, and News Channel 25 was great. Um, helping me get to this position and, and to take this position, but um, it's, I think the fact that I was in the business for, for so long might make them listen to me just a hair more or whatever, say, well, maybe there's some news value on it. And before we go any further, we announced that I was making the move, but um, I had to stay at the station until the end of May, so it was a four-month transition period. It was the longest period ever. <laughs> But I want to publicly thank Dr. Kane. Didn't hesitate. She said, "We'll wait for you," and I'm so <laughs> glad you did. Thank you. Well, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, because it would have very easily said we can't wait that long. And and uh, and, and News Channel 25 was very gracious they in the were. new ownership, the new ownership they there, were. Raycom Media. But uh, I'm, I'm delighted with the move. Um, it was ready. I was ready to stop working till midnight. You know, every night doing the news. I, and I, I still liked TV <laughs> and all that, but I was ready for a new challenge too. And so and I'm passionate about education. Well, how did it feel that first time that the story came up and they started, because you used to be the one to call <laughs> us because you were looking for the story, you were looking for the truth, and you were you, you were on a short timeline. Yeah. So how was it that first time you got the call? It was the day after <laughs> I left the TV station, and uh, that was the day a lot of the Baylor news broke with the athletic mm -hmm. department, and I was driving up to Fort Worth to see my dad, and my phone started lighting up. Mm -hmm with people saying, guess what happened? And this happened and some of the young people in the newsroom were calling, okay, this is being reported and we got, you know, what do we need to do next? And I said, you guys have to figure that out now. I'm not with the station anymore, you know? And they said, give us your phone numbers for your sources. I said, no, I'm not gonna do that because they're protected sources and, it's, and, and, and a lot of those people are friends and I can't do that. And it was like, you know, and it reminded me of, I taught for Baylor uh, as an adjunct professor for five years in journalism department, and every year, and they weren't necessarily all journalism students, mm -hmm. but I would ask them sometime during the, during the semester every year, how many of you would go to jail to protect a source? Mm -hmm. Because that's a big deal in journalism ethics to do that. And in 10 semesters, I probably had 
you know, 250, 275 students and stuff. And out of all those, only three students said they would go to jail. And they're like, no, jail's a bad place. Why would we? <laughs> of course it is. That's why you don't want to go there. But it's just uh, those sources and, and relationships that you build. And I think that's, that's one of the advantages I have from being in the market for so long. I can help, help cultivate some of those relationships and, and help them help Waco ISD. I'm hoping, so thank you. If I come knocking on your door, that's, that's a why. It's, it's, it's with a different mission, but it has been interesting being on the other side of the, and it was just a couple days later, you know, and people started calling for stories and interviews, and I thought, oh, so this is how that works. And so, and, and it's a, it's a um, there, there, there's some managing expectations mm -hmm. going along in there, but at least I know how they're, I already know how they're going to chase the story, some of the things they need. I was over at Waco High at 5 a.m. yesterday morning. One of the stations was doing live shots about the Beauty and the mm -hmm. Beast production, and, and one of the photographers was, was glad to see me in case he needed any help because uh, I, I know what you have to do to set that up, and they did fine. I just kind of oversaw some things, but uh, just in case they needed me there. But yes. Well, I know your department has, it has the Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. It also has the Adopter School. Mm -hmm. Any changes we can expect for the Adopter School department? We want to, uh, the Opti School program is a great program. We've got more than 150 partners, businesses engaging with the, with the school district, with different campuses. It's a valuable piece of the puzzle for us, and we want to grow that. And I've already had a couple of Opti School partners in the last week saying, how can we get more involved? What else can we do? So, uh, so I'm challenging Kristen Peasley, who runs that department, to she say does she does a great job. And she's developed those relationships that we talk. It's all about relationships. And I've challenged her to how can we grow this? How can we get companies, businesses, local businesses more involved? And I think we'll see even more opportunities and, I mean, Volunteers are so important oh, yes. to what we, yes. we, we couldn't yes. achieve what we do without yes. it. And so we want to help them and be a win-win situation and brainstorm. We'll have some brainstorm sessions mm -hmm. to see what can we do to help them that also helps us. How about our website? Anything uh, you see there that you'd like to change? I love that picture. And it was, you know, some of our pictures are staged mm -hmm. and, you know, they're really good of kids. But the p picture that we've kept on the website mm -hmm. was a happenstance picture when we were at the retirement uh, breakfast and our Waco High jazz kids were on a break and for some reason they all individually stood in the individual windows and they were all looking, some of them had their horn. It's a great picture. Perfectly spaced. Yes, it, well, you, it looks and just, safe. And, it, and looking out the windows from the Baylor Club at McLean <laughs> Stadium across City of Waco, it was a priceless picture. You know, it's one of those. Who took that? I'm not sure who took it. I don't know oh, who I took it. I think it was the uh, band, well, the band uh, director. Band director. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I think you're right we on that. We need to put him on our payroll. Thank you. Pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome picture, and we'll we'll utilize that a lot. And it has stayed up longer than any other mm -hmm. picture there on the on the splash page, the homepage mm -hmm. of our website. Um, we want the WacoISD.org website to be the key place to go and get people used to going there regularly. Mm -hmm. And if something happens in the district, I've told. Our staff, if something happens, there's no reason in the world why that same day we can't get a story on mm -hmm. the air about it mm -hmm. and just work to get it within. Hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll get the processes uh, smooth enough where it'll be every, every within four hours we'll get something. Even on yesterday, you know, we were at the commissioner's court mm -hmm. and they were honoring our school board and President Atkins, I happened to talk to him that afternoon, early in the afternoon, and he said, I can't believe Bruce got that story up and your interview of President Atkins before noon. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just so pleased that we are getting that kind of instant um, exposure. That makes me happy yeah. to do that. And, <laughs> and you told me that, I, and I went in and told Skip Silgo, our webmaster, mm -hmm. about that as mm -hmm. well. And Good. David Ellis is in, in terms of the Facebook and social well, media. He was there taking uh, pictures. Qu quicker too. response mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do that. Again, almost treating the department like a news organization. Mm -hmm. If it's happening mm -hmm. now, we need to get the word out mm -hmm. now and not Tomorrow will be fine, something like that. I mean, let's, we want to be the main source of news for WISD. Uh, for WISD and we should be. You know, so We don't want to see it on TV and then put it. No, I mean, you know, and if something happens at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, it's a different story, but let's get it on early the, ne the next morning. And so we want to get, and we also want to get the important information out, online registration and information and things like that. If it's anything about Waco ISD, we want you to either be able to go to our main website mm -hmm. or go to campus sites. We, each, each campus has its own Facebook site and some sites to go to to get information. So we want to make it as easy as possible for, for parents 
to get the information mm -hmm. they need. It's I say free for us to do that. We have staffing and stuff, but I mean, it, it basically it is, and it's the best word of mouth that people can message, and, and we try to answer any messages we get in a timely manner, too, and some days that's harder than others, depending on what's going on, but it's all uh, creating those expectations and managing those expectations. Well, lastly, there's a rumor that there's a new theme that you are working <laughs> on at, uh, oh, <laughs> no, <that's okay. laughs> maybe you can just give us a little tease. It's fantastic, you know, oh. it is. I, I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> um, when, when Bonnie was recruiting me uh, to, to come take this job, um, we talked about uh, the marketing message for the district, and, and it has been uh, learners today, leaders tomorrow, which is, which is great for a long time. But one of the things we want to try to create is, is a little more pride in being part of Waco ISD. I mean, we've got so many good things going on. Look at, uh, my, my gosh, we had more participants in National History Day mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. than any other district in the country. We had four people from Waco ISD, four young people mm -hmm. who went. One of them mm -hmm. uh, won a national nice. title uh, and, and uh, from Atlas Academy. And so um, they're proud to be at Tennyson, proud to be at Atlas Academy. We want that to be a district-wide feeling. I'm proud to be with Waco ISD, not just students, but teachers, faculty, staff, employees, and all that. So we're trying to come up with a marketing message that will help do that. And with that message, there'll be some uh, some motivation or incentives for the students, you know, to do some great things and stuff. And then I've already recruited some sponsors to help with that, and they say we're all in on that. We think mm -hmm. that's a great idea because. Not only the district is proud of itself and our, and our people, the city mm -hmm. needs to be proud of Waco ISD, and I think most of them are, mm -hmm. but let's grow that and cultivate that. So we're working on a marketing message, I think it's going to be fantastic, um, and it, it may be like first of the year when we roll that out after, after the holiday break. So, But the plans are in the stage. That gets me excited, too, so I've got a lot to get excited about, <laughs> the planetarium and that and the cook-off and just all the good things mm -hmm. going on. I'm delighted to be here. Well, we are delighted to have you. It is a great pleasure to have you, and you have just exceeded all expectations, oh, and you've you. been here how long? Six, seven weeks, something like that. <laughs> Who's counting? Yeah. 38 days, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a pleasure. Thank Can't you. wait to see what happens next. There's so many great changes, and welcome again. And Can I say one more thing certainly. before we go? Uh, one of the things coming to the district that, and I tell this to the new employee orientation every week. I said, you are never going to find a place where people are more willing to help mm -hmm. and be gracious and answer mm -hmm. questions. I, mean, I had no idea there were as many procedures and processes <laughs> and legal things there for about two weeks. Every day there was another surprise. Oh, you have to do this or you're in charge of this. So I'm like, wow. So, but now that's settled down. And, and everybody I asked, they either helped me or they pointed me to the person mm -hmm. who could help me. And that was such a refreshing culture to have. And I'm just, I, I want to publicly thank all the staff who do that and some of the sectors. My gosh, it's, been, it's made things so much easier. Mm -hmm. But the culture here is number one, what's best for the students? Mm -hmm. And number two, how can I help you? Number three, and they want to be proud of, of being mm -hmm. here too. And so that's been my biggest and most pleasant surprise. So, and, and, and I think that starts from the top down. So, but, but just thanks to all the employees who helped with that and all the staff, and I really appreciate that, so. Well, thank you. Okay. And thank you for watching WISD-TV.